Yo, what is going on, y'all? This is Relaxing LG underscore Jackson, and that is Big Cozy Too Cozy. And we thought we uh try something a little different, you know. We are fans of pro wrestling, and there happened to be a pro wrestling event last night, being the Forbidden Door. Yeah, listeners, this is something that we wanted to try out and see if you guys fuck with it or not. But uh yeah, we're gonna be trying to recap AW and New Japan Pro Wrestling's uh, Forbidden Door event. And we're here to run down the card at, at a decent pace. And hopefully you guys like our review and um, definitely let us know some things that we could fix or whatever. So now do you want to get to it, man? All right. So the first match was with Chris Jericho, Sammy Guevara, Suzuki. And uh, I, I'm not sure exactly as, as the house is name, uh, Minoru. And then you had Eddie Kingston, Willie Uter, and Shota Yumino. Now, I'm not very familiar with some of the wrestlers from New Japan, but for me, I enjoyed the match. I thought it was a more contained match than some of the other matches that they've had in the past. And, um, you know, all those wrestlers have pretty good chemistry, so I'm just curious to see what happens next. Yeah, I thought the match was entertaining for the most part. It was definitely a good way to open up the show. It got the fans really into it. Shouts out to Shota because that's my first time being exposed to him, watching him wrestle. Um, you're going to probably hear me hear me say that quite a bit throughout this little review because there's some new Japan wrestlers that I'm not familiar with. But shouts out to him. It was a good match, good showing. Obviously, you know, with Chris Jericho, Sammy, Eddie Kicks, and Willa Yuta, it just leads to blood and guts. But I, I thought this match was a good opener to the card next we had uh ftr U- united empire and rapongi vice this was a three-way tag t- tag team match for the um the titles what was it the igwp tag yeah, title yeah the uh i wgp so excuse me yeah iwgp ring of honor and there was one more title that was on the line the triple a title as well correct uh i don't think that was on the line i think it was just the roh and iwgp Okay. Well, regardless, this match was pretty fun. You know, like just watching FTR and all of them do their things. I I thought it was cool to see United Empire. Uh, They've kind of been building this match throughout Dynamite and Rampage. But, you know, seeing them actually wrestle together, all those wrestlers are pretty good. Um, Print had had a decent time in there. Rapongi Vice, they had their spots and whatnot. It was kind of cool to see them as well. I thought they, they did pretty well. Um, but FTR stole the show because they just, you know, the I would say they're one of the best tag teams that we have. Yeah, I think with this, this proves that they're clearly the best tag team in AEW. Um, I really like the part where Dax Harwood, who was selling the injury, he walked to the back and and it kind of left it up in the air. It was like, oh, is he injured or is he selling it? Duh, duh, duh. Then he eventually came back to to make the save for his partner, Cash. And it, to me, that made the match a lot better. And I, FTR, I think they're, I think they're going to get the AEW tag belts next. And um, kudos to everybody involved. Definitely got to give love to the United Empire. They're from New Japan. And they definitely did a good job being the heel tag team presence in this match. So it was definitely a good match for sure. Uh, the next match was Pac Miro, Malachi Black, and Clark Connors. That match was pretty good. It was cool to see the all Atlantic belt be put on the line. And honestly, I thought for a long time that Miro was going to win the match, but then Pat came back at the end and, you know, took the victory. And I thought it was pretty cool to see that he won the title, you know, seeing as he he's been wrestling for a bit of time. Like it was nice to see him get a good win. You know, that is especially the inaugural win for this belt. So kudos to everybody who was in the match. I thought it was very entertaining. Yeah, I thought Miro was going to pick up the win, but I'm not mad at Pac because, one, Pac was was one of those guys that he's been there since the jump. But, two, this you put a title on a guy who can actually wrestle well and you 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 give him something to do. Instead of just being in that same old field with, with his team versus House of Black, now he's the champion. And with this, you could create a new direction. I think this all Atlantic belt, you could really give it to somebody who's like 
a really good wrestler, but they're not just ready for the main event level. But it's a, it's like a good secondary title. And plus, you can also sell the gimmick saying like, hey, you know, we're taking this belt across seas and international. It's a real international level belt. You know, other wrestlers from different promotions, countries, they could challenge for this da, 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 and just have some really good matches. I think this was a good event. I mean, good match, excuse me. And want to give shouts out to Clark Connors because essentially he was a last minute replacement and even he got some good spots in and the crowd was feeling it. So shouts out to him. Um, I know he's from the new Japan side. So I new Japan probably is probably happy with that performance and might be looking to do something with him in the future. I don't know, but that's just what I think. He had a good moment in the match. The next match we had was, Darby Allen, Sting, and Shingo Tagaji versus the Bullet Club and El Fatasmo. Um, yeah. This match was entertaining. I thought it was cool to see Young Bucks do the silly uh, back scratch thing, back scratch moves that they did. That was kind of funny. Uh, but, you know, overall, the match was okay. I thought it was nice, you know, to, to get another good tag team match in. But overall, it was, it was just okay to me. It was a good match. Yeah, the match was entertaining. It wasn't like it's going to blow you out the water, but it had some fun moments, and it w- it was kept short enough where, it to me, it hit a sweet spot. It was kind of like, okay, we got the high spots. We got the, the cool spots. Um, and it, did, it felt like it was going to drag out where they're going to do false finishes and kick out and everything. It just, to me, it ended at the right time. And also, we got to give a shout-out to uh, – Shingo, because once again, he's another New Japan wrestler that maybe a lot of people aren't familiar with, unless you are a New Japan fan. And I think they did a good job kind of showcasing him. And Sting jumping off the the entrance, that was crazy. That was funny. Yeah, shout out to Sting. So I thought the match was all right. Next, we had Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm. Me personally, I thought this match was okay. You know, I thought it was a decent match. And if I'm going to be honest, I would say that I was more impressed with Tony Storm in this match. I thought she kind of did her thing. Um, Thunder Rosa did well as well. But, you know, seeing Tony Storm in this type of match, especially for it being the title, was it was a good showing from her. And I think she can honestly be in the title picture soon, if not have the title at some point in the future. Yeah, I think this match was pretty slow for me personally. It's not a bad match. I don't think there's a bad match on this on this card. But this match here was kind of, it, to me, it felt like a cool down period because it didn't have like the super crazy moments like the four matches prior. It was, it was a little more slow. Both of the women worked really hard, but I just don't think that uh, the match overall knocked it out the park. But, you know, I, with that being said, I hope Thunder Rosa – they start booking her better. They start giving her better matches and a better feud because she can't keep having uh, matches like this and then people are are excited to see her. And I think it's unfortunate because, like I said, both ladies worked really hard in this match. Unfortunately, they didn't have a lot of time to work into the match. It just never, like, got out of, like, the second gear for the short amount of time it had. Definitely not a terrible or a bad match. But when you compare it to the other matches on the card, this is not my favorite. For the next match, we had Will Ospreay versus Orange Cassidy. Now, this match was one of my favorite matches of the night. Um, it, there was a lot of acrobatic moves from Will Ospreay, my, this being one of the first few times we saw him. Um, I think he could easily be a star over here in, in the United States and either brand, whether it be uh, AEW or WWE. But, like, he... They put on a show um, with Will Osprey and Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy was doing his thing. And it, it was just cool to see this match go on. Um, they were working the whole time at a pretty decent rate, and they weren't slowing down, it felt like. I think this is a must-watch. Yeah, I think this match in the main event, to me, were like, okay, which of these two matches are going to be match of the night? This match... Obviously, right now is an early front runner because it comes on before the main event. This match was spectacular. Me personally, I said, "Hey, this match is kind of like an A plus if we're giving letter grades, or 
a 4.5 out of 5 stars if we're doing stars. I thought this match was was really damn good, really fun, and it and it, it was amazing. I And I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not the biggest Orange Cassidy fan because I think he was kind of like a meme wrestler, a joke wrestler, a parody. But in this match, he did his damn thing, and I got to give him respect. And shout out to Will Ospreay because – A lot of people were talking about him. Oh, you know, he's kind of like the next Kenny Omega from New Japan. I don't think he's like Kenny, but he's, well, Will Ospreay is a damn good wrestler. And if he ever came back over to AEW for whatever, hopefully to put him in a big match because that that man, he could definitely wrestle his ass off for real. And we can't forget also at the end of the match, and you could kind of couple it with the match, but at the end, you had uh, a New Japan guy, and please forgive me if I mispronounce it, listeners, fans of the product, but I think it's Katsu, Katsuyuri Shibata, and the crowd went nuts for him. They went insane. He came out, he beat up uh, the United Empire because they, they were out there with Will Ospreay, and then him and Orange Cassidy had a little moment with some sunglasses, and the fans were just happy. They're loving it. I think the match and the post match antics was good. It, it, this, at this point, I was like, man, this show, wow, this is the best wrestling show of the year so far. Coming into the next match, we were supposed to have Brian Danielson versus Zach Sabre, but he was out because of concussion reasons. So, with that being said, uh, Instead, we had a mystery opponent coming into the picture, and we didn't know as to who that was before the match came on. It turned out that was Cesaro, a.k.a. Claudio Castagnoli, and that is what he's going going as now in AEW. He made his, um, I would say, debut, and it was pretty entertaining to see him go against Zack Sabre. Uh, He was a strong man against somebody who was trying to put him in different holds and whatnot. And he came out, he did the giant swing. Everybody remembered that, you know, that was a big thing. And uh, he was one of the stars of the night last night. Yeah. Shouts out to Claudio. I, you got to get a man respect now, you know, got to get, got to call him Claudio. No more yep. Cesaro, nope. but he came out, he had a great match with him in, uh, in uh, Zack Sabre Jr. Actually, that's my first time watching Zack Sabre Jr. Wrestle. Cause once again, not really familiar with a lot of new Japan guys, but Zack Sabre Jr., he definitely did his thing. And I liked his style, too. It was like a very heavy grappling submission. You know, I like it. It, it, it fit the match. I think him and Claudio definitely tore the house down. Um, the match was a little slow at, at, at first. I think the match could have been a little shorter, but it doesn't mean they've ruined the match at all or anything like that. That's just me nitpicking. But shouts out to Claudio. He had a great debut. Shouts out to Zach Sabre Jr. He was a debut to me, even though there's probably fans out that already knew about him. So I like this match. This match was good. Once again, yo, know, this pay-per-view is turning out to be wrestling event of the year so far. The next match was Jay White, Cozy Chica, Okada, Adam Page and Adam Cole for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Wow, what were your thoughts? So I thought this match, at first when they did the booking, I was like, well, I don't know. I, I'd prefer it if they did a one-on-one match. But after tuning in to the actual match itself, the match was really good, man. All four men did their thing. Um, I think the best two wrestlers out of the whole entire match was Okada and Adam Page. They were hard hitting. They were doing their damn thing. They were kind of controlling um, the the match itself, the pace of the of the match. They were kind of they were just carrying everything. But Jay White was kind of doing his thing, and Adam Cole was doing his thing as well. The match was on its way to being coming one of the best matches on the card. But I I don't want to say like a botch happened. I think. I think what happened was what Okada hit that drop kick mm-hmm. and kind of, yeah, Okada hit a drop kick on Adam Cole and it kind of shaken Adam Cole up. Like it essentially knocked him out on his feet type right. of deal. Um, Okada was going to hit his final move on him. Um, I think it's called the Rainmaker, which is kind of like a, a Lariat or a clothesline or whatever. But 
he was going to hit that move on on uh, Adam Cole, but Adam Cole kind of like collapsed. Now watching that live, I thought like, oh, Adam Cole's just selling. No, he was actually knocked out because after he collapsed, he kind of like laid down. Jay White did his move to Okada. Then he pinned uh, Adam Cole one two three. But right after that match, you could see like Jay White talking to the ref. And they had like medical people coming in and all that stuff. So it was a good match, but the ending was weird due to the injury. And hopefully Adam Cole's good. And um, but it was a good match. Once again, for Door is proving is the event of the year. Yeah, watching this match and watching the other matches, like this was easily uh one of one of the better matches of the night, in my opinion, but it was a better match in the match in a night. It was a better match in a night of great matches. So you know, to me, I was satisfied. the The injury, or I should say, the ending of the fight was, you know, unfortunate. But you know, hopefully, he'll get better, and we'll see him soon. Yeah, for sure. The final match of the night we had John Moxley versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. What did you think? So, like I said, it was this match or the Will Osprey match that I would consider match of the night. Well, that match was kind of fast-paced and acrobatic. This one was a bit more slow, not slow in a bad way, but kind of like storytelling, and you could really follow everything that they were doing. It was a bit more hard-hitting, which I like. Um, I got to give respect to John Moxley. He did a little bit of his kind of style where – he takes the match outside and does a little bit of brawling and, and stuff like that. But I got to give it to John Moxley. Like, he did a good job in this match. Tanahashi, I know a lot of people probably have never seen Tanahashi wrestle before. But Tanahashi's good. He's good. I think he helped uh, helped Moxley a lot in this match to make it more of a real wrestling match. And uh, I think the I think this match was good. I'm not surprised at Moxley winning. I think it's just because, like, they're not going to give a New Japan guy the belt because <clears throat> CM Punk, he's still, he's still the champion, technically speaking. So I think they're, they're going to try to really cash out on that Punk versus Moxley matchup whenever that happens, whether it's all out or whatever. But I think this match was pretty good. I'll give it the same rating I gave the Will Osprey match. Um, now, after the match, it was a little kind of chaotic after the match was over. You had the Jericho Appreciation Society run in, jump Moxley. Then Blackpool Combat Club came out, and then Eddie Keeks this year too. And it was just kind of like a big buildup to promote Blood and Guts, which is like, I guess, fine. But I can understand why people didn't like that closing out the show. Um so I, I didn't hate it, but it wasn't my favorite thing either. It's all right, you know, but I don't think that ruined their pay-per-view. I think the pay-per-view was still great with that ending segment or not. So what did you think, Nigel? I thought the match was cool watching it. I felt like, you know, we definitely <laughs> got to give John Moxley some credit. I feel like John Moxley has put on some really good matches over his span of uh, AEW, at least. I'll say two to three matches you absolutely have to watch. But, you know, I feel like this was a good showing between him. I've never seen um, Tanahashi wrestle before last night, but he did a good job. I thought they, they – I feel like you're only seeing certain wrestlers put on the type of match they put on last night. And I thought that um, they both deserve credit for being able to do that. Like, they, I think they um, really pulled it off. As for everything afterwards, I thought the funniest thing was seeing Eddie Kingston getting just very angry at Claudia. And it was just, that was wild. But uh, I, I'm curious just to see as to, I, I thought it was cool. I thought it was cool overall. Yeah. What would you give the event overall? Like for me, I I gave the, if I had to grade the event, I would give it like an A, a solid A. I think it was, it was one of those cards where, hey, I don't know. These matches are kind of nonsense. There's a lot of tag team ultimate matches, but every match, including the women's title match, was good. Where some of them stood out more than others, but it was just a really great night of wrestling. It was like, you know what? I'm excited for Forbidden Bo- Forbidden Door Part Two. I can't wait for Forbidden Door Two whenever that happens. 
I feel like this card was way too much of a success for that to not to happen. I want overall, I think the card's like a nine out of 10, like an A. It's not, it's not the best card I've ever seen, but this is like a very good card and probably will be card of the year. But I, I just enjoyed it. You know, I thought it was a extremely for it to be put together with all the injuries it had and whatnot. I thought it was yeah. very good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, is there anything you had to add on to the card? Um, not necessarily adding on to the card. Um, I mean, I'm definitely curious about to see like what AEW does in the future with their future events, whether it's pay-per-view and all out or their next big dynamite episode, which will probably be grand slam. I'm, I'm curious to see that. And of course we got blood of guts and by the time this, this review comes out, I think blood of guts will be like the day after. So we always have that to look forward to. And kudos to AEW they're you know they put out a really good event and they're getting you excited for the next one and that's them doing their job yeah i um i'm curious to see when forbidden door 2 comes out because i just had a good time watching this but uh otherwise yeah i think listeners if you enjoyed this go ahead and give us a follow and give us a like uh, tell us what you think in the comments. I am relaxing LG underscore Jackson. That's Big Cozy, Too Cozy, and we will see you guys next time. All right. See you guys. Holla at you.